Hi guys, this is uh, Ben versus the drums, and um, I'm here with a another tutorial. Basically, most of us, like me and you, don't really have you know ten thousand pounds to record drums with, or a sick drum room with the most intense acoustics the man has ever heard. So we normally res resort stuff, something like um, Superior Drummer or Addictive Drums. And um, what I do is um, from home, I've got an old Yamaha DT Express Two drum kit that I um, play into. A mini interface and through logic and I figured something really cool out it's not really complex as such but it's just some little rooting tricks that will make everything a lot easier so I'll just show you basically what I do is I run superior drummer out through a couple of um, buses and within superior drummer if I just bring it up and show you if you look in my mixer I've got everything set out so these are coming out through the superior drummer outs I'm skipping the internal buses completely and they're coming out. So I've got my kick drum coming out of bus, uh, well, of the out nine, snare out of three, hats out of four, rack toms out of five, floor toms out of six, and I've got all the room mics going out of six and eight. So basically, what I'm going to show you here is the rooting and how you can basically record straight MIDI signal into audio signal um, real time. So if you take a look here at the bottom, you'll see that, as I said before, Superior Drum is coming out. Now, in Logic and uh, most sequences, you can have an option, instead of bringing stereo, bring it multi-output. You definitely want to do that so you can root everything independently. Now, um, it comes out in stereo pairs, so I have 9 coming out, which in, in turn would be 18. It comes out in both 17 and 18. Don't ask me why, it's just the way it does it. Um, now the way I've done this is I have the in coming from superior drum and out. Then I've rooted into an aux channel bus 10. And what then I do that is root that out into my other kick channel, which is an, an, um, a mono audio channel. And then I have the in from bus 10, which is going to basically be sending the signal from superior drummer into this kick bus out of this kick bus into a real audio track so it's going to send the MIDI t signal through the bus and give me an actual you know a nice transient to, to work with and what I then do is I then send the out of this kick track into bus 1 which is my main drum bus and, and that's there and um, so what that enables me to do and I've done that with everything if you just take a closer look um, so I can actually show the inputs but I've got give me a second I've got, uh, so basically, I've got bus 10 is my kick, bus 11 is my snare, bus 12 is my rack, bus 13 is my floor, 14 hi-hat, 15 overheads uh, in a stereo, uh, and the rooms in 16. I then have my tracks with the ins as the outs from the buses, and then they all independently go to bus 1. You'll see that I've got um, some send set up for bus 2, that's um, to work with parallel compression to give that drums a bit more of a punch. Also, what I do before I parallel compress it is, as you'll see in a minute, if I have my tracks armed while I'm recording out of the other tracks, I get two drum tracks, and it'll just kill the monitors and kill your ears. So what I do is um, I actually mute what I'm tracking to and just listen to the, uh, the second drum track or the sends as such while I'm tracking for monitoring, and then when I've tracked everything, I then just whack a compressor on it and bring the level down, and it actually acts as the parallel compression. So I'll show you that in a minute. And for now, I'll just literally show you this. Basically, if I just um, if I just record, I just take this metronome off to uh, not annoy you guys. And if I bring up Superior, you'll see in a second that I just sorry. And I will have this preset for you guys to download, by the way, as well. Um, so press record. You'll see there's nothing coming through, but if I hit something. You'll see that these are coming coming through as as you know real time transients, and I actually use this on my kit to play to play along with a friend. I mean, for example, I've got these two channels set up here with guitar rigs. So on my second interface input, I'll have um, a guitarist going in, and uh, 
you know, we can just jam out, and it's, it's really cool. I mean, you can even record something quite quickly, and it'll sound it'll sound like fairly decent. It's perfect for um, dr if you wanted to do, you know, YouTube drum covers or anything, or if you just literally uh, want to get something simple started. So um, I'll just show you this tracking method here. So I'm going to mute these tracks for now. Otherwise, they'll, they will sound like this, and you'll get two amount of drum tracks coming through, and it's uh, very loud. So I'm going to mute these for now. And then I'm just going to show you the recording and it will come through. So as you can see, pretty much recording straight in. So basically, I'll unmute these, and what you'll have to do now, once you've had everything recorded, is mute those original buses, sending the MIDI signal. And uh, there you have it. On bypassing compression, you get that nice punch that comes through. I know this might not have been useful for um, most most of you hardened veterans out there, but I thought I'd do something simple and you know get it out there. Also, one thing I forgot to mention is um, playing around. If you on the actual MIDI track as well, not only can you record your audio, but you can also record the MIDI at the same time. So it's almost think of it in a way when you um, record a guitar and you send a DI out. You've got your dry signal. You know you can mess with that in the future and reamp it. Or you can keep your tone in the same way as this. You know, if I just start hitting stuff, it should. Oh wow, that's embarrassing. Should send the MIDI signal, but it didn't, unfortunately. Um, don't ask me why, actually. That's really weird. But yeah, anyway, that's um, that's everything.